so uh, let me introduce our next speaker uh, he is uh, dr chaturanga rana singh senior lecturer in faculty of medicine university of colombo and he is the specialist in sports and exercise medicine and he'll be talking today about the exercise is medicine a vital sign not to miss over to you dr chaturanga uh good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, uh president karna kulka president of the lma and the board chairperson uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk on this topic um i would like to share my screen uh, yeah so um i'm asked to talk about exercise uh, uh and how it's related to a doctor or a physician Uh, especially um, at this stage so it's, uh, it's quite an interesting time that we talk about exercise and movement uh, when when now movements are restricted and i'll try to uh, relate it to this situation also so exercise is medicine a vital sign not to miss so in the next uh, couple of minutes i'll try to focus on these objectives uh, why exercise is medicine why why you call it this exercise is medicine uh, slogan has come up with the american college of sports medicine as a movement and um, why are we taking it as a, a vital sign why should we be taking it as a vital sign and challenges uh, as clinicians what we face especially for us to be active and also for us to make others active uh, what are the challenges in our local context we have and some solutions and take home messages that uh, we can take uh when it comes to increase in physical activity strength and make our people live long okay so why exercise is medicine so medicine is given to a disease or a condition so exercise also should be given to a disease or a condition and also it can prevent death so i would try to mainly uh, focus on what are the scientific latest scientific evidence behind uh, the exercise and also um, what are the new uh, components which has come up in this uh, area my yeah so mainly mainly three reasons when it comes to uh, doctors one thing is uh, there's enough evidence to show we have been listening to this over the last couple of decades it prevents and it can manage ncds and one important thing is again we are talking all of, all the time about people with diseases but it improves well being of the normal people who don't have any condition and the other thing in the last couple of decades which has come is it has become a complement to other existing medical surgical care and reducing of health care cost so that is something new which has come with the exercise uh, component as a therapeutic model okay we know non communicable diseases number one killer in the world there's direct evidence and with time it is independently the fourth leading risk factor for global mortality 6% of the deaths are due to physical inactivity and it is rising and uh, so how this thing came up in the picture is that uh in 1950s you know uh, in london uk uh, they detected that uh, the bus drivers uh, is a common thing seen in the uk if you have seen this the bus the bus drivers have been getting heart attacks and uh, this group morris uh, et al uh, have try to go into detail with this and they found out the conductors were not getting heart attacks and this led to this paper in lancet in 1953 for the first time the relationship with the coronary artery disease and sedentariness because bus drivers are most of the time seated and the conductors are they are, they are walking around so with this association there was a lot of data lot of research which has come in with the for the development of uh the who accepting it and developing it uh, as a guideline so then by 2010 uh, it came as a guideline and now it is accepted by the world health assembly by all member states 
and even our national agendas to promote physical activity and reduce inactivity by 10 percent by 2030. So in that background, this is what we know as our guidelines on physical activity. Well, I just I think most of the doctors know that, but sometimes doctors also don't know about these guidelines. So I'll just tell what it is. So mainly you talk about two types of activity about aerobic activity and about muscle strengthening activity. So you have to do uh, about 30 minutes of moderate intense physical activity for about five to six days per week. That is about 150 minutes of say walking. Uh, moderate intense activity is like brisk walking. Your heart rate improves, heart rate goes for about 60 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate. And uh, for about 40 year old person, You'll be walking around in your 130 uh, beats per minute. Like so, vigorous, intense aerobic activities like jogging or running, which goes beyond uh, that heart rate. That is around your 40 year old, around 60, 160 minute beats per minute. So, you have to do about 20 minutes for that and 10 minutes of duration at a straight. So, this this is what we prescribe now. Gradually, our doctors say walk 30 minutes. So, that is what we prescribe. But there's another component to this guideline, it is the muscle strengthening activity. So muscle strengthening is important mainly for major muscle groups, right? You know, to our legs, for our hands, for our core. So major muscle groups, uh, especially this is relevant to Sri Lankans because our muscle mass is less compared to uh, the Caucasians, the whites. Uh, we have high fat mass and low muscle mass. So that is related, directly related to the metabolic problems that we have and also sarcopenia we develop later in life. So protein supplementation, having a strengthening as a, as a Dr. Renuka Jadiza mentioned, is very important to our group. But we see we are not prescribing muscle strengthening activities to people. There are many reasons for that, but that is something we have to look uh, as doctors to give some basic uh, type of exercises to our people. Now, now, even though we prescribe exercise, there are major problems. We always say we don't have time to do exercise or even prescribe exercise. So uh, one reason uh, is that if we don't have time, at the same time, we have to do 30 minutes of exercise. But in the recent past, there have been a lot of studies going on whether doing less than that have a health benefit. Is light intensity exercise just walking up and down, not going heart rate up to 130, or is just moving around your met values around one to three? Would that really count? So, this uh, in the last decade, a uh, lot of new technology came into this discipline. People uh, previously we were mainly asked whether we are active with questionnaires, and uh, then it was recorded that how the data has come in. But later, in last decade, a lot of gadgets came in through the scene and you objectively measured the accelerometer, with accelerometers, Fitbits, uh, these watches you see. So there are a lot of data which is uh, objectively measure your uh, physical activity level. So what they saw was that people actually tell more uh, than they actually do. So their data have shown that uh, uh, it really have shown that the association between physical activity and risk of death is about twice as, as hard, uh, large. Meaning, now if, if you see this graph, this is uh, from one of the latest articles which has come up. So this uh, shows that, now this is the risk hazard ratio, all cause mortality, right? And this is how people be active. So these 150 minutes of activity, moderate intense activity. And they steeply reduce their uh, all-cause mortality when you increase your activity level. But when you take it from accelerometer data, you see when you actually measure that level, that is even more, even more than uh, you really are, you really say. So, so the association is about twice as large with the accelerometer data, which is clearly strengthened that it reduces death. Physical activity and exercises reduces death almost twice as we thought before. 
and this uh, paper from uh, in the BMJ uh, in last year it really changed the way we think about exercise. Now this shows all cause mortality that is the death from all causes and how it reduces with moderate intense activity. You can see from 0 to 5 up to 25 minutes if you do per day that will steeply reduce the all cause mortality. This is high quality evidence and even 5 minutes of activity has the reduction. And beyond that it really doesn't show any all cause mortality reduction but there are other benefits uh, like improved fitness etc. But here you can see at this level it is really so 24 to 25 minutes of uh, activity has really shown this improvement. And the new thing is uh, this uh, data also showed that the light now this is a meta analysis there's a lot of data in this a uh, lot of people have gone through this uh, the prospective study for about six years they followed up then they showed uh, this so this shows that if you do light activity just walking just not sitting down just hang, moving around without being sedentary it also reduces your uh, all cause mortality but that's about 300 minutes per day but you can see even two hours there's a steep reduction of uh, if you do light intensity so that's about one one point reduction so that is something that uh, as doctors we have to think of when we are telling our people and and with the last year improving uh, increasing of social media watching tv sitting there's a new behavior which has been defined it's not just physical inactivity it is called sedentary behavior that we are being just lying down or sitting for long periods of time and this data has shown if you are, you are going more than eight hours per day like people who are in the offices even us who walk or sit for a long periods and lie down and it has shown the all cause mortality suddenly going really high up so the take home message is if you just ask somebody to sit less and move more and more often that will make you live longer that itself will make you live longer. So, what the evidence say? Any intensity of physical activity has health benefits, and this has been reviewed in the new guidelines which will come up in the WHO also. And less time spent in any sedentary behavior has substantial risk of reduction in premature mortality. So, that's about people who are having diseases. But uh, let's talk about normal healthy people. I mean, in, we know SDDs, good health and well-being is the sustainable development goal number three. And how exercise can be used for health and well-being. You see in the public, people are walking, they are active, which is good. So how health and well-being as a holistic thing that could be improved with this. Now, um, we have some local first-hand evidence how this is improving. And uh, we, there's a, you must have heard about Nero Lanka project, which is done under Sri Lanka Medical Association. There, uh, at this stage, we are doing health promotion at the grassroots level. There are about 200 settings in six districts, uh, contacting about more than 10,000 families. Now, what we see when it comes to health promotion and uh, improving of health and well-being is that it's not only physical activity that we uh talk of it's 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 about uh it's about other things also it's about your intellectual uh happiness it's about your occupation your social your financial there are a whole uh spectrum of things that involve in health and well-being so what people do is people go into this process and they move in this process so they move in this process and collecting uh different aspects of well-being so what we see is, what we saw was uh, getting people into this process of well-being is difficult. Starting exercise, in starting changing our diet, starting thinking different is is a bit difficult. But when you get into that, you are in that process. So in in most of our settings, we have seen the people at the grassroots level doing in this process. But one difficulty is getting them into the process. Uh, what we saw was when we conduct aerobic exercise ex activities. It was something easy for you to get them into this process because it's a tangible thing. You feel something. So people tend to get into this process pretty easily with exercise as an initial contact. 
Now, this is uh, one of the uh, MOH areas where the people are exercising. So, we, as a point, as a, as a type of uh, initiative uh, exercise or being active or promoting physical activity could be taken as an entry point to this well-being process. So, that is some uh, knowledge that we have from the local experience. The third point is, of course, we are doctors. Most of they are joined in our doctors in different disciplines. So, it's not only prevention of MCDs that with exercise you can see. There are a lot of other areas that exercise has gone into, even, even for surgery. Uh, there's a concept called prehabilitation. You prepare people for surgery with exercise and nutrition and psychology. That has shown the surgical outcome is more better and reduce hospital stay, reduce costs and therapeutic exercises for depression, lifestyle medicine, chronic disease. So, uh, to already existing treatment to alleviate them, we have seen that these are important. Now, what is what is happening with the pandemic? We are talking about exercise and movement. We are restricted. Yes. So there is uh, there was a study done in one of the main uh, Country, main cities that you can see this is the step count. Uh, normally people walk around 6,000 to 7,000 and with the declaration of COVID, it really went down and it went down and kept like that and just start when the lifting orders are lift up, it is slightly picking bit up. So this shows that COVID is really affecting our mo momentum, our movement and our exercise. So this is something as doctors that we have been thinking. So there are two pandemics happening at the same time and CD pandemic is big, even though we don't perceive it. So these two pandemics are happening, which is a challenge for all of us. Uh, we don't know the outcome yet, it will come later, but this is a good time to make a behavior change. Uh, as doctors, this is something, time that we can think how uh, people are tend to change their behavior, so how you can make them more active and make them more healthy. So benefits of exercise and COVID, I just thought it's better to inform at this moment. And uh, there is a, we have reviewed uh, the evidence and it has shown that it improves immunity. Uh, exercise improves immunity on prevention of COVID. And especially when you are doing exercise at moderate intensity, less than 60 minutes. So if you are going beyond that, that can reduce your immunity. So when you are at home, don't try to overdo exercise, start gradually and do small bouts. And also a very recent paper which came uh, uh, about two months back, it has shown that your maximum exercise capacity is high. The, the Even you get it, even if you get the coronavirus, this is the hospitalization that we get it. This is done in the Maya clinic. And when you, they have checked it with the CPET, their maximum oxygen uh, exercise capacity. And it has shown that it is universally related. So it is something good that we can think of. So WHO has put on uh, how to be active on uh, during this time when you are at home. You know, do small bouts of activity. You can do dancing. Try to do, do some exercises online which is available. And skipping rope is a very good type of exercise if you are strong, like especially to the kids, you can give this, they will enjoy that and do some, just be active, do some exercise, even small five minutes is helpful to you rather than just sitting down. So we have tried this with the Rocky project in most of our settings. I can see with the social media platforms, people exercising, make keeping the distance. So, so it is possible uh, to do that. So yes, so that's why exercise is medicine. Yes, and why am I talking it as a vital sign? What is a vital sign? The vital signs are things that we come when to our consultation. We measure them like blood pressure, pulse rate. So even how good this is, uh, who, how beneficial exercise is, and how it, even that is the leading risk factor for global move, that is the fourth leading, it is often missed in our consultation. There are a lot of reasons for that. So, so if you keep on missing this, there'll be more repercussions. So this is the global trends for inactivity for the last 16 years, right? And this is the prevalence of inactivity in a population, in a country, right? 
this is the high income countries these are the low income countries and this is the mid income countries where we fall you can see there is a rise in the last couple of years so nearly 40% it is almost double as low income countries in high income countries. And our, our Sri Lanka, our inactivity is about 30%. One in three people are inactive and females are more inactive, almost reaching the levels of high income country. So this, if this will progress like this, we won't be able to reduce our inactivity levels in the next 10 years. So the doctors at this moment has a big duty if we can keep this down uh, at this level. But when you are trying to promote physical activity, uh, there are, if you really think, there are some challenges that we always see. Now, this is our 24 hour activity pattern. Right? If you just plot it like this from the 24 hours, you sleep, you get up, you have a long transport day, you go on, and then you go to work, you stay about eight hours there, you come back home, not much leisure time and you have more sedentary time watching TV and going to bed. So that is a normal day of a person, especially an urban uh, person who is living in the urban suburban areas. So, but what we have been telling for the last 20 years, we have asked them to walk for 30 minutes and exercise, which has gone really well. But we are mainly focusing on leisure time here because uh, that will the idea which people get is in the, in the leisure time you have to walk 30 minutes as exercise. So that is the message that has been going for a long time. But the problem is when we think about the low and middle income countries like ours, most of the time people spend their daily time on non-recreational activity. Recreational activity is or leisure time activities like sport, going for walks, etc. But most of the time they are at work or transportation or doing domestic things. So this is uh, different to high income countries because high income countries, they, their transport, their activity work is flexible and they have more time for leisure time physical activity. Now this was revealed in a, in a large study, more than 100,000 people, that it has shown that this is more. So what, what I think is that the leisure time is very low in our population. And in our interventions, while we are thinking about improving leisure time activity, we have to promote here too. There have been things that happen in to improve activity at these times, which most of the time the people are, I think most of the 60-70% of their daily time, they are at these times. So as doctors, what small messages that you can give to improve at the workplaces, it has been happening, but it has to be more focused that people understand you want them to be active at these phases also. So, for an example, if you just ask the person at work when you are sitting down, just to do five minutes of sit to sit to stand exercise. You know, this is the squat. This standing five minutes to strengthen your bigger muscles, your hamstrings, your glutes, and your core also, and your quadriceps. So, it's a good exercise if you can just tell, do five minutes of that, right? And very simple message, just reduce, stop uh, sitting down. Right? So those messages will really go into public's mind. Right? And any short activity will help. You know, there are methods that in the Western world they try to do. They stand up when they walk. Uh, they try to stand up all the time when they're doing this, uh, they're working. So yeah, what are the challenges we have? So I told you this uh, Sri Lanka, uh, we, we are in a different context. We are a developing nation and we are getting industrialized more. And uh, in our setup, doctors, clinicians, nurses, physiotherapists, they are the change agents to promote physical activity. People listen to them and uh, you meet uh, patients and people more often. But we are busy. We have busy clinics, lengthy uh, roles, and we don't have much time talk about it. So that is a big challenge that as doctors, I think most of you face. And also for these type of promotions, our infrastructure and systems are not there. You know, we don't have many gyms, but the walking paths are coming very good, but we don't have much time. And at the same time, we spend two, three hours in public transportation, which is of course not easy. And of course, the systems also still doesn't 
support it doesn't give more time for you to be active with the person so these are the challenges the doctors have uh, when they're saying okay walk or do exercise 30 minutes the people really don't have a choice they don't know what to do so i mean so what are the solutions for clinicians at this juncture and we can't wait until gyms are coming up we can't wait until the, the walking paths are there everywhere which are safe but as clinicians uh, what i would propose is one take home message number one is do be active yourself be a role model talk about it it's a strong message if you are active if people see you are active you, know, you don't have to be you know doing going to gyms and doing a lot of exercise if you just take steps you know we show people and talk about it i have friends you post on facebook that they are active that is a strong message that you can do so number one you be active you be a role model and second thing is at your consultation in every consultation take it as a vital sign just like blood pressure heart rate pulse measure you just while you are doing that just ask whether how is your walking how is whether you are walking about 30 minutes per day and just tell afterwards that uh, every step counts even light activity is beneficial and reduce sitting so that will take about 15 seconds for you to tell them so just get that habit that will have it has shown that the doctor's message has a real uh, good input on people's mind and the second thing the fourth thing is do an exercise prescription if possible start with a short bout of activity not long things just give them something that they can achieve even if you if the guidelines say 30 minutes just ask them to walk 5 minutes initially and report back in your next consultation how how to do that so exercise prescription itself is a scientific way of prescribing an exercise dose i don't want to go into detail of that but it just uh, you need an assessment of the previous exercise levels and contraindications you have to plan with frequency intensity time and type you have to individualize to that person and progress okay. gradually that is very important that you are something that we are worried about you progress gradually and you have to review so those are the principles of exercise prescription and one thing that we should not do is depends on obese person don't only focus on weight when when you are doing uh, an exercise prescription you not know, reducing weight because weight reduction after a while will plateau then people will lose interest tell them about the fitness because fitness uh, health related fitness parameters your cardiovascular fitness that is stamina how long you can walk your body composition your fat levels your uh, waist circumferences flexibility muscle strength and endurance now these independently directly relates to your health so if you improve them if your waist circumference is reducing even your weight is not reducing that's okay that's a good point so talk about fitness not only weight and i i would i think that every doctor should need exercise prescription training and should be included in the undergraduate medical curriculum because that is something that uh, and if, because it's in our national guideline it's there in the state and everywhere we mention that we have to promote exercise but basic doctor needs that in the curriculum the latest uh, sedentary physical activity and sedentary behavior guidelines will be out in this november 2020 look for it and with the national guidelines in our country the ministry of health get your professional colleges to use them that is a good thing if the colleges starts using them with their own ways like with, with the cultural adaptation that will be a very good thing for the future so try to follow that it is there if you google be active it's easy to come up so some try to relate with the latest evidence so this is the activity pyramid just like the food pyramid cut down sedentary time do some strength training activity do majority of cardio activities but every day just be active don't sit down if that's the take home message so my time is up i'd like to take some uh, questions after that so be active everyone every day and everywhere so uh, I think I uh, got some uh, message out of it with the latest evidence. So I thank you very much for listening.